This is a micro Korg. I got it for much cheapness on the Bay of E because it doesn't work very well. These are amazing synthesizers. They're sort of well renowned in the circles of techno trance and old school R&B sounds come out of them, retro sounds. They're absolutely fantastic. Mine is sick. So it powers up and it sort of works and I'll show you that now. <laughs> That's working just fine, no problems. I turn the volume right down. So that's where our problem lies. And if we switch to oscillator one, then we adjust the cutoff here. As soon as it goes to VNE and DI9. No problem, sign. Right, there we go. <laughs> this thing really does make some rather cool sounds. As you can hear, there are some clear problems with it. Let's take this thing apart and let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. <laughs> and then with a little bit of luck, we'll have a micro Korg that works. And then you're gonna have a really, really happy, dubious engineer on your hands. Mm -hmm. It's a little TDK A33 device. I absolutely adore it. And it's more than loud enough as a little portable uh, sound amplifier to be used with the Korg keyboard. So I've plugged that in. And then this here with the missile switch on it, tong! That is the uh, power supply that I built. Uh, you can charge it up here. It's a 12.6 volt lithium ion pack inside here. And then uh, we've got a nine volt regulated output. And here's one of my spider cables that connects to many different keyboards. And that can plug straight into the Korg and turn it on. So you can hear that the keyboard is actually sort of doing what it says on the tin. So certain selections of programs just seem to burst into oscillation and have this horrible problem. I've done a full factory reset on the keyboard to reset everything back to its original settings, but unfortunately, these faults are staying with the keyboard. So a little bit of research says that we're gonna to have to open the keyboard, pull all the knobs and switches and dials off of it, and then have a look at the motherboard. Volume control, turn it up and rip the knob off. <laughs> So these here are just splined posts, which are split cut and the knobs pop off relatively easy with the use of a small screwdriver. Using a small one and a half mil Allen wrench, Allen key, there we go, just, there we go, pop that knob off. And it's time to get the Spaniard on it. Spanner or wrench if you're American. All of these hex heads here are three millimeter hex heads and they just pop out quite easily. Once you've done that, you should then be able to pop off the front panel. Turn the unit over and then you can use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws in the base. Once you've removed all of those screws, you can then open the device so let's have a look inside this micro corg interesting i've always wanted to know how these pitch bend and modulation wheels worked so there's a plastic wheel a return spring and a potentiometer connected to the pitch bend and the modulation wheel doesn't have that return spring on it but effectively it's very similar what we need to do is remove the main PCB from the unit so that we can gain access to both sides of this PCB. And in order to do that, we're gonna to have to remove the keyboard ribbon cables, the pitch bend and modulation wheel cables, and then also the power cables as well. Oh, there's an earth strap to undo, a few more Phillips head style bolts, and we probably need to remove the cover plate for all of the jack plugs and the rear panel controls. We're gonna to have to inspect this very carefully. 
with some careful persuasion we're able to remove the main board. The main PCB has a combination of digital and analog electronics on it. So we're going to have to inspect this very, very carefully to see if we can visually find a fault. And if we can't, then we're going to have to try and figure out if we've got a capacitor or a resistor or some other problem with this PCB. So it's really quite interesting the way this micro cork PCB works. What you've got is you've got a DSP unit here. Actually, the unit's turned on and I'm using a metal pointing device. <laughs> Let's use the finger. Um, well, that's nice and warm. So what we've got here then is a DSP connected to some RAM. This is a ROM. This is some more RAM here connected to a 2032 microprocessor. So that's the crystal for the microprocessor, the clock crystal. And then over here we've got a clock crystal uh, which goes over to the DSP. And over here, if I get you a little bit closer, uh, this here is a, a DAC. A DAC and an ADC. So this converts all of the wonderful digital noises that come out of this digital signal processor here into analog noises that we can hear with our ears. And then we've got um, a set of different potentiometers. These potentiometers have the ability to be able to adjust phasing, flanges, and various different sort of filter settings, if you like, uh, that are associated with the DSP over here. Up here, we have the MIDI interface. There's uh, the two five pin DINs on the back of here. And uh, that's MIDI in and MIDI out. And there's a couple of chips that handle that side of things over here. Um, also, at this very end is the very boring bit. There's uh, power supply. And on the underside of the board, there's a couple of inductors. And we've got some... Uh, some voltage regulators and that kind of thing. The board, the chips run off 3.3 volts and um, the analog electronics, which is over here, <laughs> and the analog circuits run off of 5 volts. So this is the drive output section over here for headphones, for uh, line left and line right. Uh, and then over here, we have input. And this input is for the vocoder. It gives you the ability to be able to connect a dynamic microphone, a condenser microphone, um, and various other things uh, into the Korg, which is then clearly fed into the DSP for adjustments for vocoding. These are just relatively simple sort of switches. If you look under here, you can probably see that's just a, a little... Oh, quiet that's just a little pressle switch um so nothing too scary about those we do have some rather nice looking uh rotary clunkety clunk switches <laughs> yeah anyway there we go a little bit of a guided tour of the korg the micro korg pcb so after a lot of work including the resoldering of a whole bunch of QFP style chips. I still haven't been able to fix this. And the reason why I have subsequently found out is ultimately because this DSP chip here, the programming on it has become corrupt. Um, and I don't have JTAG, I don't have a programmer for it here, and I don't have the code that I would need to upload to this board. So unfortunately, this unit is going to suffer its ill health forever and ever. I did think it might be this chip here, which is a DAC and ADC chip, but there's literally there's nothing between this chip and the DSP here. So ultimately the DSP is sending the wrong signals to the audio creating chip. So unfortunately, this board is gonna to have to stay as it is. It does work. Um, it works quite well. It's got quite a nice sound to it. Just the fact of the matter is the vocoder and the digital side of things don't work properly. All of that said, let's get on and make a little music.
Here it is, all assembled again. This time, put a couple of MIDI patch leads in place. So I used some MIDI software that's provided by Korg, and it gave me the ability to reprogram this. So now I've pretty much programmed out the vocoder and any of the digital effects. But we've still got some lovely effects from this keyboard. Let me show you. Thank you.